Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again with some more big news that we just received from Game Informer during the latest update back on Wednesday, August the 31st. So, here we are in the tower over here. I know I'm just doing a slight little gameplay here. First things first, um, normally when Iron Banner happens in year number two, he would appear over here. And obviously it would be open. But in year three, which would start in a couple of weeks, Iron Banner for year number three will be at the new area, the Fell Winter's Peak. Uh, it's going to be at the new social area in the Playlands. So again, it's called Fell Winter's Peak. Uh, uh, Lord Saladin will be uh, hosting Iron Banner for year three, beginning either September 20th or 27th for year three. Because obviously it's pretty much the end of the month. That's when Iron Banner will start. Now, when it comes to the uh, the tower, now it's closed for now. But once Rise of Iron launches on the 20th, this will be completely open. And you guys are thinking, what on earth are we going to be doing in this tower over here? Well, there may be some good news. We might have some new events happening at the tower. So that's pretty much an understatement right here. So you may never know. So it will be officially open completely starting on the 20th. That's for uh, Rise of Iron launch. Now, a um, couple other things I want to point out here. First things first. Um, I know I'm uh, scrolling over here. And I managed to get 47 out of 51 achievements here. I know those four I may not be able to get. Now you guys are telling me, are we going to get some achievements? Well, we got some good news as well. We will get new achievements for Xbox. And of course, if you're on the PlayStation 4, new trophies. So, obviously, it's a good way to uh, burst, uh, uh, burst, boost up your, uh, your uh, gamer score a little bit more. Just by uh, completing the tasks there on the screen. The locked achievements, that is. So, it is confirmed we'll, we will get some new achievements um for rise of iron which will launch in about two weeks time certainly cannot wait for it but we may not wait long though because as we just last got report from game informer we may have some pre roi content one week before launch and that could happen starting september 13th so we could be playing Rise of Iron one week early. Well, just the pre-content, but the real thing will happen on the 20th. So, that's pretty much my favorite thing right there. Pre-Rise of Iron content will more than likely drop, if it is true though, one week before launch on September 13th. They might have done the same thing with uh, the Wolf stuff back in year number one, when um, House of Wolves was the last minor expansion from year number one and then the Taken King the big expansion came in year two last September so that's pretty much the information right there also uh, Rise of Iron uh, as mentioned will be uh, coming out on September the 20th with the pre content if, it, if it's uh, true coming out s September the 13th that's one week before launch uh, release time for Rise of Iron will be at 5 a.m. in the morning that's in the Eastern Time Zone, 2 a.m. in the Pacific Time Zone. The download for uh, pre-orders, so again, if you pre-order it for either the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, the download will occur, so people can just pretty much jump in right away. Um, some taken appearances on the patrol uh, eventually won't change. The quest lines and bounties will pretty much be auto-completed. And once Rise of Iron launches, we will not have a weapons balance, but um, the weapon balancing may pretty much happen later on in year number three. Um, we will also begin some new exotic quests there, no surprise there. Um, weapon quests for sure, I know three of them for sure. The Kovastov quest, Thorn. <laughs> Like, who doesn't love Thorn? And uh, the, the Galahorn quest. So I know three of those exotic quests for sure. I think there's probably going to be more than that. But we have three for sure. 
an update on Zur. Um, he'll more than likely be selling both the uh, Silver Dust and I'm pretty sure he's going to be selling some uh, ornaments as well. Now again if you if you receive some sort of ornament just to uh, <coughs> excuse me just to um, modify your weapon skins a little bit like say for example the Monte Carlo was white without an ornament but if you place an ornament on the Monte Carlo it will turn pretty much black and red that's a quick little example right there now if you dismantle an ornament it will change into silver dust which is another new material being added to the game and of course from Tess Everest as well she'll more than likely be selling I believe she'll be selling some chroma not quite sure but I think she's gonna be selling some chroma I think it's gonna be like different colors there or orange white green yada 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 um, silver dust possible as well and I think there's another one called the golden age lens I think that's what Tess Everest may have in store over there um, the three of coins will stay active in year number three so it won't be taken away from them so if you want to be grinding out some exotic engrams from uh, ultra enemies in year three by all means you can definitely use it as many times as you wish so again, three of coins will stay active in year three. You will begin some grimoire in private matches for Crucible, along with uh, the the four maps that you will be able to play in. So, um, if you play all four new maps in PvP, then you'll get uh, four grimoire cards and a fifth one for completing your first private match, just like that. Um, pretty sure for Grimoire I think you will, you'll more than likely begin some Grimoire score as well for playing Rise of Iron and defeating new enemies as well so there, that's your information for Grimoire and uh, like, like I said the uh, in-game events will, will happen uh, for pre-launch on September the 13th we will begin some new swords as well and I know one of them for sure, and I I know you guys are waiting for it. The axe. Oh yeah. Everybody's getting their hands on the axe sword, hopefully. But I think there's going to be a quest uh, to eventually complete it. Man, does everybody really want an axe sword? <laughs> I know I do. Also, some strike-specific loot will be available in year three as well. And of course, that we've been discussing a few videos back regarding the new skeleton keys system. So I'm pretty sure the only way you can get skeleton keys, I think you have to complete uh, complete Archon's Forge. I'm pretty sure, but it's been a while since I last remembered it. But if you receive a skeleton key, and I think the maximum stack is five keys. If you complete any specific strike in years 1, 2, and now the prison, you have the option to use the skeleton key to get your specific strike loot. So for example, um, like I said, in the Dark Blade, if you want to uh, get your Grasp of Malak or the, or the Dark Blade Helm or the Dark Blade Sprite, you can use the skeleton key. Simple as that. But, yeah, but again, you, you got to complete the uh, the strike first and kill him in order to get access to that chest line. Um, there's also going to be some light level faction packages as well for for uh, leveling up. Not quite sure how high it will be, but it's just depending on where your light level would be as of this very moment. Uh, there's also a variety of secrets, which, like I said, involves some quests for uh, exotics. Uh, the gunsmith weapons and the vendor weapons will have a light level increase, but no exact value. Excuse me, no exact value has been set yet. Uh, there is no vault increase as of right now, but uh, it has been confirmed they may increase the vault space, but not at launch. I think it's going to happen later on in the year, but uh, we don't know especially as of yet. The Year 3 exotics, by the way, will be added on into the Year 2 section of the Blueprint Kiosk. That's for uh, weapons 
and armor. So they'll be added in to the year two exotics just like that. Yeah, I'm just going over through YouTube as well, just to read it all out. Uh, the U1 weapons will not have any changes as well. Galahorn's more likely going to be a powerful weapon. No game-breaking results from previously. Thorn will still be the same. The new ability artifacts can be chopped and changed at any point in the game. And of course, their abilities will commence as soon as it's equipped. Now, year two trials gear. Uh, more than likely not going to be available until later on in the year. But you got to make sure you complete your trials this weekend, the Labor Day weekend, because it's going to be offline for three straight weeks. But like I said, first one for year three will start September the 30th. So that should be something to look for right there. There is a possibility we may have some old raids returning in fall of 2017 when Destiny 2 launches. So pretty much like Vault of Glass, Crota's End, King's Fall, and I don't know about Wrath of the Machine though, but the old raids may be returning in 2017. So who knows? Should be something to look forward to right here. Now, I'm going to go uh, back to Orbit right here and uh, discuss a couple of big things here. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Now, um, they're going to be adding in some strikes here for the Vanguard. So, in Vanguard, they're more than likely going to be uh, a Vanguard Legacy playlist over here. There's also going to be a Taken King Taken King uh, playlist as well. Over here, normally it would be, uh, well, right now we're in year two, but uh, this right here might be a non Rise of Iron playlist right here. And I think for up here, it'll be the Siva Heroic Crisis playlist. So that's pretty much going to be uh, the fourth strike playlist that they'll add in there. Now, right over here, and again, once it launches in two weeks' time, I'm pretty sure there'll be a level 41 or 42 strike, I think. It'll be a her heroic uh, playlist. It's going to be called Siva Crisis something. But it's going to say Siva Crisis. The recommended light level for this one, you'll need to be at least 350 in order to attempt this right here. And uh, the legendary marks, they'll be the same with three weekly bonuses. So every time you complete a strike, it'll be uh, 10 legendary marks. You can earn up to 30 either on on one character or 10 on all three. Suppose that. So the rec recommended light level is 350 to attempt the heroic strike. And I believe the nightfall... Um, I think the recommended light level for the nightfall... If I were to guess, I would say... In between... 370 and 390 but I don't know officially we'll just have to find out in two weeks time and one last thing before we go is radiant treasure now the only way you can get radiant treasure is by completing just one of the Siva crisis playlist right here and you can only earn radiant treasure once a week in the strikes just once that is all if you if you feel like you should be getting more than one radiant treasure a week you can purchase radiant treasure from Tess Everest or Tess Everest sorry <laughs> not Tess Everest <laughs> Tess Everest so radiant treasure you can only get it once a week in the Siva Heroic Crisis playlist and uh, obviously you can get some experience as well maybe a legendary engram to f throw in there as well so other than that I think we got everything broken down completely and like I said folks Rise of Iron is only two weeks away well actually a little over two weeks away and uh, we might and I, s I said it before I'll say it again we may have some pre ROI content happening s one week from launch. I think it's going to be September 13th. We don't know officially as of yet. Now again, if you missed the 
near one hour long um, preview where both Bungie and Game Informer are asking, asking and answering a lot of those questions from the August 31st update. I will uh, post the link in the description box below. So until then, folks, thank you very much for watching. And again, before I go, Bungie has one more pit stop on the way. It is PAX West in Seattle, and that's coming our way this Labor Day weekend, September 2nd through the 5th. And then, launch. Oh, man. And I am so setting my alarm for 5.15 in the morning once it releases at 5 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, 2 a.m. Pacific. Pretty sure it's 11 a.m. in the UK. Other than that, we are finished here, folks. Thank you so very much for watching. We may have some more Rise of Iron news before the launch actually happens. So when that happens, I will keep you updated every step of the way. And again, keep subscribing to the channel here, folks, because we're, we're only a couple of subs away from 250 and less than 1,000 views away from 100,000. If we can reach both of those goals by September 19th, I will be doing a huge engram opening and give you a cinematic video on another video. So I'll be making two milestone videos on day one launch, folks. Should be fun. You definitely don't want to miss it. So until then, folks, thank you very much for watching. And until we see you on the battlefield again, peace out.